And welcome back here live at Heritage Hill at Brew House. It is the exclusive Q&A section of the show here with Coach Fran Brown. So for those who are getting the notifications on QSportsTalk.com, you can go into the stream chat, say hi, uh, talk to the coach, ask some questions about the BC, uh, Cal, other topics as well. Uh, the fries tonight, Coach. And, you know, it's kind of casual, laid back. I'm sure if you want to grab one there, you can. Yeah, the fries are good. Yeah, they're really good here. I get them every week. Every time I come, you should come. These fries are good. That's like the the way to go. Well, there's two. There's only two shows after this left. So next week on on okay. Wednesday, I'm going to get here early and take your word on that. Cheese fries, though. You got to make sure you get the cheese on the side. Cheese fries, and then grab you a Shirley Temple. And that's it. Deal. Cheese fries and Shirley Temple. Yeah. That's how you roll. That's all right. That's cool. Uh, if uh, you'd like to talk to the coach, again, the stream chat here, QSportsTalk.com, uh, the place to be as people are checking in right now. Uh, one from uh, Roddy. We'll get started right here. Coach, how much did the Las Vegas trip prepare the team for the road trip at Cal in terms of handling time zone change, travel time, etc.? I mean, it should have prepared. Guys will remember that, understand. Um, it should prepare them, prepare them for how long the flight will be, things of that nature. But, um... It's going to be another day of practice. You just got to get there, be ready to practice. Then let's get ready for the game. So we're excited that um, we get an opportunity to go out a day early. You know, thanks to our, um, you know, it's pretty cool. Thanks to our like, equipment staff getting there early and doing all the things they need to get done. So we're excited to be able to go out there and compete. Now, when you were at uh, Las Vegas at the UNLV game, uh, UNLV game and flew back, is there like a, a seat reserved for like a MVP or like player of the game? Like they get like an upgrade? No, that's pretty cool, though. Maybe you think about that, but everybody get the same seats. You flew in, you fly back on yeah. the same seats. But if, like, LeQuint, like, like that game, he would have got, like, the seat, like, next to you. I mean, the, he always the, sit in the front no, he in his own seat by himself. So, you know, he don't got nobody next to him. It's an open seat where he sits at. So, it's just him, and then he sits by himself. Well, and, he, and, and the guy like that earns that. He mm-hmm. played well, and that's, that's how you get to sit at the front. Yeah, he's a, man, he's a really good football player, tough kid, so excited. Uh, does it feel kind of like a short week just because of the travel day and even though it's a week between the games, but because you're going out a day early, does it kind of throw you off and it, it, a little bit or no? I well, just got to follow the schedule that I got planned. Once I get done, I got to go back home and watch the practice tape. Just try to make it. This was just something that was in the middle of it, but just got to move. Some things got moved the day forward, but we still got practice tomorrow. We still got to do all the things that are needed to have a successful Thursday. Uh, this question from uh, S. U. Bruck: How is Haynes doing in practice? Um, he's been doing okay. He's doing well in all the stuff that he's able to compete and able to do right now. We just got a, a lot of stuff to be able to push him back into, but he's doing fine. And now, um, how we're implementing him back, weight room wise, and now he's getting ready to hit the field. So, looking good. Yeah, he's doing okay for the weight room wise and all the things that he's doing right now to come back. So you know he wasn't there for a while. So you just got to be able to push him back into that. Uh, this is from uh, Steve. He says, uh, Coach, we're averaging 18.7 yards uh, kickoff return, and we've had nine occasions where we tried to run it out and not gotten to the 25 on six occasions. Uh, the farthest that we've gotten is the 28. Uh, is It's boring, but would it be better to just make a, a fair catch and accept the ball at the 25-yard line? I don't know. I thought about that, but what if they hit one of those? All it takes is one. Gonna, yeah, that's not, that's like almost the way you don't want to be soft. So we're just going to see. We'll try to get past the 20. If we get to the 26 and not the 25, that's one more yard, right? So we're just going to And like you said, it you, you give them the, somebody the chance to break one out. It only takes one. And how often does that, does, does that happen? I'm trying to think of many, any times I've seen that in a game, a fair catch on the kickoff. Fair catch? Yeah. No, no that happens. Yeah, it happens, and you just go right to the 25. Uh, this one here from uh, Roddy. And now that you're a head coach, how much time during the week do you spend on recruiting during the season? A lot. Yeah, I recruit a lot. I was just on the phone on my way over here. I'll um, be on the phone as soon as I leave from here. I'm texting all the time, doing it. I got to recruit, you know, to some extent every day for the most part. I heard a little bit of the conversation with you and Matt on the way in regarding the just the time, I think somebody may have asked a question about the, the difference from being a, the position coach to being a head coach and then the time, and, and, and I think you were talking about now you're worried about the whole team and not just yeah, the, the entire, one part of the team. The entire organization, not just that one position group. Before I was just a head coach of my position group. Um, now I'm the head coach of the entire organization. 
And that's all the responsibilities that come along with that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I enjoy it. I like it. Uh, at the BC game, Coach, do they have on the uh, a Jumbotron there? Because I couldn't tell watching the game. Like, for example, when uh, Arunde had that great one-handed catch in the end zone, is that something they show and replay on the big screen at that stadium? I don't know. I never really looked at their uh, replay. They may have. I mean. Do you ever, like know. during a game, have you ever looked at, you know, the Jumbotron that they play in the stadium for like to, a, a, to a look replay and see or? if like hey, let, let me see it myself yeah. as they're trying to go to find out if it could have been a fumble or wasn't a fumble and different things like that I, I watched it Saturday when it was one so I just look at things like that but I don't really watch the I get to watch it live and up front and up close so I don't really look at the jumbo trying for the replays uh, had anyone coach grab you for putting uh, soap is for winners like on a hat or a t-shirt no, like I think some kind of a yeah, some like shirt. an NIL thing. I mean, that's just brilliant. I don't I think. think I could get NIL, but they do got uh, <laughs> they got T-shirts out. They do. Yeah, they got T-shirts. I seen it. Uh, winners wash. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So there's some T-shirts out. They, they online too. So go online, you got possibly be able to get them. So that's pretty cool that they're doing that. But it was just something I just said locked in on. You know, instead of brush my teeth, I'm gonna get washed in the morning. I mean, I don't play in the game like I told them earlier, so I don't really know. Know the deal, and I, th- I guess you would have to be like, uh, as they say, and a lot of people hear this, you would have to be from the trenches maybe to understand that and just understand what it's about when uh, something goes on, something bad happens, uh, you lose something, or you lose, or there's different pieces. You got to go back to the drawing board, and sometimes it requires you to be completely locked in, not be around everybody, be in your own space to be able to figure out why these things happen and what happened, you know. Mm, take it back to a lot of people in my neighborhood when I would see them out. Outside, literally 24 hours not going in the house they just outside around the way you know and those guys was uh they was outside just getting it the way they had to get it so you know I, I don't take that any different than that in my mindset it's just me being able to focus on what I need to focus on so that I, I can get back on track and have the team on track you know being able to um lead these men into a victory you know at some point now, is it like refocusing, or, is it, or after a game like that, do you, do you beat yourself up a little too much in hindsight, or you just, I mean, I know no, I just you take it serious? The tape. And... Facts are facts. They're right there. I just get to watch the tape. I don't really beat myself up about anything. Um, I get upset about certain things. I don't like being around. Uh, like soft stuff, people that were soft at the moment or just soft actions that I may see, you know, you write it down and you just make sure you talk to them about it. You address them, you address the coach, you know, I address myself if I had something to do with that action that was uh, displayed on the football field. But for the most part, you know, it's just learning from it. It's going to learn. Like, you got to go learn fast. Like, I don't have time to do all the other stuff. I want to learn fast as I possibly can so I can hurry up and try and um, – move on to the next event that we have coming up, which is normally practice. You know, our meetings with the coaches, then it's the practice. But I got to have the right mental and the mindset to be able to go into it. I can't go in like I'm not going to get done and just be excited and happy and just go live on and be skipping up the street or anything like that. Like, I'm, you know, it's a part of me. Like, I love the game. You know, when you really love the game and it's something like a piece of that that you work for, you don't get the results that you were looking to get. You know, it's uh, it's like, dang, like, you don't practice to lose. You know, you practice to win. So just trying to stay focused on it, you know, and it's just something that happens right there. And it's just the nature of the business at that moment, you know. Now, when you watched the game tape back, what did you take away? What did you learn from that that you can bring forward uh, for the game this coming weekend? We got to tackle. got to stop the run, you know, and we got to start fast. We got tackle, stop the run, and start fast. We do those things, we'll be all right. Why, how, much did we, how much did we lose by? Six. Cool. And that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah, yeah. We lost by six, and they had played a really good football game, and we didn't play a good football game at all and lost by six. So we got to play better. So then that way we can see hopefully different results happen, you know? Got to play tougher. We got to impose our will a little bit more. Uh, essentially, and I think you, you may have mentioned this in your press conference on Monday, uh, really you're just two plays away from being eight and one. And yeah. That's fourth, how tight it's been. Fourth and one and fourth and nine. And that's the difference right there. Uh, it is. That's, and, that's life, though. Yeah. You know, it's life. You know what I mean? There's no missed opportunity. Somebody takes it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I uh, missed the opportunity when this was going to happen. Now nah, you ain't prepare yourself enough and you missed it. 
they took it. Somebody grabbed it. Yeah, somebody else got it because it don't stop. You know, it keeps going. So just try to go and try to have the right mindset of being able to um, just overcome a lot of things, overcome different obstacles, you know. Uh, this one here from uh, Roddy says, uh, since, uh, Coach, you're from New Jersey, did you cross paths with Greg Olson during your youth? No. Different? I mean, we're age. from different parts. I'm from Camden, New Jersey. They was from up, like, North Jersey. Oh, now. okay. So we ain't, we ain't crossing paths. They ain't coming down to Camden um, unless we just saw each other at, like, a camp or something of that nature. But, no, nah, we, ain't, we ain't cross paths. We're in different spots. And, you know, most people don't come down our way. Uh, this is from uh, Terry from Manley's here at uh, Heritage Hill. Uh, he wants to know when you and uh, Kyle were on the sidelines for last year's bowl game, what made you think that you could uh, turn this team around by coming to Syracuse? Because we're tough. We're winners. We're winners, you know. So it's same mentality. That, yeah, we got the same mentality. We um, love what we do. It's important to us that we work extremely hard. So that's just like a part of the game. Uh, this was a question, actually, that came from a text during the morning show because people know that we're going to be here tonight. How did your kids' Pop Warner team do? They uh, ended up winning the championship. They did? Yeah, they won a the championship. His championship game his championship game was the same day that my championship game, no, not, not championship, yeah. that we played Boston College, and they ended up winning the game. Um, he actually had five touchdowns. Did he really? You know, he had a pick six. Uh, he was hitting. He did a good job. He had a pretty good year. So, But they won a the championship. That's exciting then. Yeah. Now, is that available for you to watch? Did somebody, did they film uh, those? I just got they, a lot of, like, little highlights and stuff they send, and then they'll put up the clips, and then he'll throw it on his, like, Instagram page, things like that, and then let certain coaches get a chance to see it. You know, I may send it to a guy, too. It was pretty cool. A couple of weeks ago, he had another good game. He's been scoring. He scored five times that game. The other game, I think he scored three or four, and we got a chance to send it out to uh, Coach Prime, and Coach Prime was like, look at my dog. That's cool. Tell him did he got, really? Tell him he got an offer from me. Yeah, he's always <laughs> Helping out and sending things with my sons and all, like little glasses and stuff like that. And just that encouragement of having the opportunity of prime time being able to do that and speak on it like that. It gives him motivation to keep pushing and keep going. You know, I could say everything, but I'm just yeah. dad. But then that's Coach Prime. That's Prime. You know what I mean? It's, it's the best to ever do it. So, so I'm very blessed that he does that with us. I know last week you mentioned that. I didn't realize that you're able to stay in touch or communicate with them during the season, too, because you're both obviously busy and head coaching your own teams. Yeah, yeah, but it's usually just texts and things like that. Or if I'm like one day I got a chance to give them a couple calls about some things that I, uh, might be troubling me, I'm um, thinking about, worrying about, I'll um, be able to hit them up with that. But for the most part, you know, I got a couple guys that I call in the coaching industry that I could call. And they're not always there to be able to talk, you know, and Coach Muschamp, Kirby Smart, uh, Glenn Schumann. Um, and then being able to call, like, uh, it's different guys that coach me, but Coach Prime being another one of those guys where I just hit him up and talk because of us uh, just being in the same subculture, you know what I mean, the same culture, understanding those things, and I'm asking him questions of how it got to where it's at and how do you keep think, how do you flip it fast, you know, and I think he did an amazing job of flipping that program fast, so me wanting to follow those footsteps. You know, want to do it a little bit faster yeah. just because of being competitive and um, him just telling me you're on the right track, do this, do that, do that. So it's, just, it's pretty cool to be able to call a guy um, with his status as a football coach, also as a really good Hall of Fame football player, but then now I think as a good football coach also. Uh, if you have a question for Coach Fran Brown in the stream chat here on QSportsTalk.com, feel free to put one in there. Uh, this one, do you think, Coach, that the ACC will get more than one team in the college football playoff? I don't know. I'm just hoping all the things work out our way and we just keep, get, can continue to win. And uh, they throw us in it. You yeah. know? <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. So we just got to see. I mean, I hope it does. I think it's a great conference. It's a lot of good teams. As you can see, all the games from everybody is always close. So we're a competitive conference, one of the more competitive conferences in the country. Uh, when you look at all the other conferences and all, there's a lot of blowouts within conference play and things of that nature. And we kind of all play together and play good football. Uh, I think we have some of the better coaches. You know, when you look at our upper level of all our coaches, from a Dabo Sweeney to a Narduzzi, you know what I mean, to a Bill O'Brien, sure. Coach Durham, Oh, man, you just keep going. Uh, coach at Wake Forest, I mean, him, uh, Georgia Tech, Coach Key. I mean, there's so many of these dudes that are um, legit, 
when it comes to coaching. So, I mean, I think that we have, I mean, you got Stanford, SMU's coach. I mean, so many of these dudes doing a good job. Don't forget Manny Diaz, <laughs> been doing this for a minute. So, I mean, I think our conference is a really good conference with a lot of uh, good ball teams. And look how competitive everyone is this year at any time. Anybody can beat anybody because the coaches know, like, we're out here trying to uh, create greatness. Well, that goes for, for example, uh, the team you're going to play on Saturday, Cal. I think of their four losses, that it's been a combined, I don't know how many points. They've lost a couple by one, a couple by two. They had some tough losses, man, some close ones, same as us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We both had some tough losses, so but they do a good job. Their coach is a good coach, good quarterback, good defense, good all that. So. And we'll just see how it goes when we come to play each other. One of uh, the guys that we have on during the week, uh, one of our football guys who also has a vote in the AP uh, Top 25 every week, he called uh, Cal the best, worst team in the country based on on that, the fact that, you know, they're looking at their record, but then how they played those games and how they lost those games and they were so tight. That is, again, a very deceiving team to look at and obviously you know all too well watching them on, on tape as well. No, they're a great football team, so I'm not a... Uh... I don't know about no best worst. I just think they're a good football team. They ain't like the worst. They're not worst at all. But I just think they're really good at what they do. And um excited about the opportunity we have coming up. Who are some of the guys, as we watch the game on Saturday, to keep an eye on across the uh, sideline that you've been – Highlighting and showing the players. Oh, they, they, y'all know who they are. They can all play. They got receivers, running back, quarterback. I mean, the same guys. I'm just really trying to focus on us. Um, but they got a good a good group of offensive skill guys, O-line, pretty good. The quarterback, of course. And then on the defensive side of the ball, their secondary is really good. And um, I think their linebackers are some of the better linebackers in the country. And then um, the D-line as well. They do a good job. 44 got like 10 sacks or something. So they got a bunch of players that can play. Uh, this one here, uh, Coach, uh, when you go out west for a, a game a day early, when do you practice? Do you, and do you go to, like, uh, is there a small facility on campus or another college? Or do they have a practice or a high school that lets you practice any of the above? Yeah, we go out there and we figure it out. There's like no... <laughs> yeah, we just go figure it out. Well, we know we go practice somewhere. Uh, we try to practice somewhere, and then we just uh, maintain. You treat everything like you're home. But we get there, and we try to practice somewhere. Uh, this one here. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba. Has Coach ever met uh, Dewan Milt, uh, or Milt Wagner when they were living in Camden? Who, me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, me and Juan, they like best friends. Like, oh. uh, yeah, all the time. I mean, I mean, I talk to Milt whenever I want. I can call him. Um, I call him Uncle Milt. Uh, me and Wani grew up together. We are as close as could be. Like, you know, uh, we, we grew up together. We've been playing together since we was little kids. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, that's why I said Wani, you know what I mean? But, yeah, me and Wag know each other well. I know his son, DJ. I coached his son his first year playing football. When my first year ever coaching, I, I coached the B team, and he was one of the players on my team. Him and my son played together, so... I mean, we've been around each other our whole lives, so yeah, we definitely know each other. Still talk to this day. I probably call him on the way home since y'all just brung it up because I ain't talked to him in a few weeks, and um, we're always uh, communicating and talking to each other. That's cool. Uh, how about the, this, uh, Coach? What are you most pleasantly surprised about living in Central New York right now? I know people have asked you before favorite restaurants, things you like to do. Is there anything pleasantly surprised? you after you've been living here now for a while no i really like my neighborhood i live in yeah i really like my neighborhood and uh my neighbors and all like that i think they're, it's a cool neighborhood so i like where i live at uh have you uh, t- uh taken your have you had a chance to keep, take your kids down to the most that came up earlier this morning the museum of science downtown no, i ain't got no time no for time for that yeah I take them to the museum of uh, right outside of Ensley, and they get a chance to see Ernie Davis, Jim Brown, and Floyd Lowell's statues. You know, that's the, about the most museum we're going to come see. I walk through our building and look at Keith Bullock's pictures on the wall and different guys that play football there, but I don't really have time to go to the museum right now. My wife does all that stuff, though. She does an amazing job with our daughter, libraries, and doing all the things of that nature and taking my son everywhere, but... You know, um, I show them history of Syracuse when they with me. We go on campus or something like that, but I don't usually have time to uh, 
go down there. I have. I don't. What is it called again? Uh, the Museum of Science. It's the most. It's called Museum the most. of Science. Yeah, I've heard of it, though. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people down. said it's nice. I hear it's nice. Yeah, it's my wife of... went though. Now that you said it again, she, my wife went. I remember. I think she went in the summer with her and another coach's wife or something like that. But I remember her going. I think so. And it's down uh, in uh, Armory Square near some of the places that you like to go for dinner. Actually, right around the corner. Hey, well, I like to eat. Yeah, it's yeah, I like to eat. <laughs> I like, so like, good like, uh, like good food, you know. Uh, is there any uh, other spots? I know this comes up every couple of weeks or so, and you've mentioned a couple. Any new little gems that you've uncovered as far as uh, restaurants, diners, little out-of-the-way places that you've discovered? No, just the same ones. I like going here. I like the uh, Myers Creek one. They got some good wings also. Um, I like the cheese fries here. Not really just... No, not really. I don't got time to really go see anywhere else right now. So I'll, I'll check that out when 2025 get here. Then I'll tell you what's the new places I'm going to. Uh, who on the team uh, with a long flight like the one they had out to California has going to have the most uncomfortable flight ride just because if it's a six-hour flight and not an airplane? Probably Lysander. Yeah, I would say Lysander might have the most uncomfortable flight uh, just because of his size. He's huge. Um, you know, he's a six foot five, three hundred plus pounds. I ain't gonna say his weight, but he three forty five plus. So you know, his flight probably uh, is probably uncomfortable for him. You know, being on that flight. But it'll be hopefully a nice flight on the way back after a just, wind coming up. I'm just trying to get there first. And just then we get there first, and, and yeah, let's get there. Then we see what the rest like on the way back. Uh, Coach Fran Brown. Uh, Coach, I tell you what, we will uh, see you a week from tomorrow, right? On Wednesday? I think I'll get a, a week from tonight. Which is another Wednesday that? night show. Uh, uh, we play home, don't we? I think there is a basketball game on Thursday. Are you going to be week. at the game? Yeah. So I think that's the plan. If that's different, hey, they got I'll let you know tomorrow. I like watching tape and doing all this stuff. Y'all keep messing up. The way we do things, which is cool because it's for basketball, but I just want to um, stick to my pattern. You know? Have you had a chance to uh, go to any of the basketball games? There's only been two, but we're, nah, you poke your head in there? No, nah, not yet. I'll go once the season's done. Once our season's over, then I'll be at possibly trying to get to every basketball game. I love sports, so I try to get to as many sporting events as I possibly can be at. Basketball, football, lacrosse, like whatever sporting event is going on. I mean, I'm an athlete. You know, I always have that athletic mindset. So any sport, anytime there's a sporting event, why would I not go there? Especially when it's at college and it's, you the know, atmosphere. at the level that it is, the atmosphere. So I try to have my children have as many opportunity of seeing sporting events and seeing people compete. You know, there's nothing like competing. And just love to see uh, all the student athletes do it, especially since I'm watching them all work out all the time and you get a chance to see them. So I'm excited for them, excited for all the uh, – the fall sports, I mean, the spring sports that'll be coming up, you know, and all those different sports. So I'm just happy that everybody's um, get the opportunity to go out here and compete this year. Tonight, the uh, SU women playing and uh, Coach Felicia Leggett Jack, we have her on once in a while. Love talking to Coach Jack. She's uh, just such an inspiration, and I love the words that she has for her team after the games. I don't know if you have a chance to run into her on campus, if you guys bump into each yeah, other, some of your coaches, but she's, uh, she's top notch. Yeah, she's thorough. She's real. She's as real as they come. She's a great person and a great mentor. Was a great athlete here. Let her tell us she still could shoot. <laughs> um, but now nah, she cool. I like Coach Jack. We talk all the time, and uh, she's always giving me advice. You know, giving me what it takes to just be successful as a, a college coach, college head coach, because she's been successful at different places. And I'm um, thankful that um, I got an opportunity of calling her a friend, and uh, that we're growing to be family. Uh, last but not least, Steve says, I hope uh, that you get to come back all nice and clean after the game on, on the Saturday. That's the plan. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's the plan. That's the plan. You get a shower on Saturday. Yes, sir. There you go. Coach Fran Brown, go Orange. The game is on Saturday. And, Coach, we'll see you back here next week at Heritage Hill. And thanks yes, again sir. here on QSportsTalk.com. Yes, sir.